off to the jungle. I'm the king of the jungle, they call me the tiger. Another famous room here in Graceland, the Jungle Room. We're sitting right in front of the fountain with the legendary George Klein. George hosts the uh, Sirius Satellite Elvis Radio live from Graceland on Friday afternoons from 2 to 6. That's 2 to 6 Elvis time. He also is the host of a TV show here in Memphis called Memphis Sounds. And a uh, lifelong friend of Elvis Presley. He's going all the way back to junior high school. GK, you were friends with the king uh, before he was the king. You got that right, Kevin. We met in the 8th grade. 1948 Humes High School in the exact same classes when he moved up from Tupelo from the 8th until the 12th grade. Where we really bonded was in a music class. We had the same music class in the 8th grade together and uh, it was Christmas time, I'll never forget it, and the teacher who was Miss Mormon, she said next week instead of studying Christ mu music, we're going to let you sing Christmas carols. And Elvis raised his hand and he said, Miss Mormon, can I bring my guitar to school and sing? There were a few little laughs because eighth grade, 1948, that wasn't cool. So she said, yeah. <clears throat> so he brings his guitar to school um, the next week, and he gets up and he sings two country songs. He sang Old Shep and Cold, Cold, Icy Fingers, and from that moment on, we were bonded. You and Elvis, uh, in this room, this historic room, the Jungle Room, uh, an album was recorded here. You were here during that time. Tell us a little bit about Live from Graceland. <clears throat> Well, Kevin, it was a very historic album because Elvis didn't want to go back in the studio. And it was in vogue at that time to record in people's homes. And what they did was they rolled up one of those big sound trucks out behind uh, the jungle room here from RCA Records, and they ran the wires in, and they had some baffles, uh, room dividers, and they put the drums in a little container, and they put the singers over there. And Elvis, he stood up on the steps by the kitchen. That's where his microphone was, and I was standing over there by him, and uh, he recorded a lot of great songs. The two that come to mind are Hurt and Way Down. Both of them did very well on the charts. But uh, the, the room, as you can tell, it's got carpet on the ceiling. And he had that done even before they decided to record here. And then they, put, they took blankets and they put them over the windows so they can deaden the sound of the room. And it was kind of unique. They had a little bands crammed in here and it had a real compact sound. How did Elvis like recording in his home? Well, he liked it because all he had to do was walk down from his bedroom. He'd walk down the stairs and say, okay, let's go. And then when they say, Elvis, well, we're going to be down for a few minutes setting things up, he'd go back up to his bedroom. And it was, just, it was wonderful to record in your home. 30 years after his passing, are you a little surprised that the, the, the impact that Elvis made on the world culturally is as strong today, maybe stronger today than it was when he was alive? I'm a little more of a surprise, Kevin, honestly, to be, be quite frank with you. I'm going to be honest with you, okay? Uh, I thought it would last five years, and here it is, 30 years. So I'm tremendously taken back by the fact that after 30 years, Elvis is still as strong as he was almost when he passed away. Jerry Lee Lewis has got a great line. The killer said, GK, <clears throat> Elvis has been dead 30 years, and he still outdraws me. If Elvis were here today, what do you think he would be thinking about uh, the, you know, the respect and, and, and the, the love that he still has 30 years after his death. Elvis would be, uh, he would be beside himself. He would be so happy that the people were still remembering him and they were still coming to his home and still buying his records and still checking out his videos. He would be, he would totally be happy. I mean, he, I know Elvis. <laughs> he always said that his fans made him and that his fans maybe would perpetuate his legacy. And they're doing that. And he would be totally happy. George, you know, one of my personal all-time favorite songs is Suspicious Minds. And I know that you were mostly Partly responsible for Elvis recording that song. Well, of course, Mark James, I want to give credit where credit is. Mark James recorded that. Chips Moman produced it. But what happened, Felton, it wasn't here at Graceland. It was at the American Studios in North Memphis, which is no longer there. Thomas and Chelsea. And uh, that song was presented to Elvis in the middle of the session. He liked it. It got bogged down in politics. It was put aside on the very last day of the session. I went to Elvis and I said, Elvis, we forgot one song. He said, what was that? I said, Suspicious Minds. He said, that's right. That's right. Let's go in and try it. In two takes, they got it down when it was all time great song. Two takes. Nailed it. Was it like that with a lot of his songs? No, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, Hound Dog took 32 takes. Uh, Elvis was a perfectionist in the studio, but if he felt a song 
and he got into it, and Elvis felt he didn't care whether the guitar was perfect or whether the bass was perfect or the piano was exactly right. Elvis was going for a sound, and Sam Phillips had taught him that trick. Elvis, don't worry about it. We're not selling guitars. We're not selling drums. We're selling you and songs. So if you get the feeling there, that's what we're after. So Elvis was always looking for the feeling as opposed to the perfect record. Well, George, we want to thank you for joining us today on Give Me Memphis, and we also want to thank you for all that you do, not only for keeping Elvis's legacy alive on worldwide radio and television here in the city and all your appearances that you make all over the world, but also what you do for this community and all the musicians and all the artists that you have really helped form their careers over the years. Uh, and uh, if I had a vote in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for DJs, you'd be right there at the top of oh, the that'd group. that'd be a tremendous honor. You know, at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I went up and accepted Elvis's first award and made a speech for him. That's unbelievable. That's the exactly right. The very first induction That's about exactly 14 right. years ago. Well, thanks for joining us today. And, you know, they say that the clothes uh, make the man. Well, we're going to be joined now.